So we saw how to use Lambda layers to add our node modules directory into our function here, the Node.js function, so that those were available to us when we ran this function, which allowed us to have a small function, right? The code base was very small, but the layer itself provided the node modules, right? So in this case, the function is just the index.js file. Otherwise, it would have the Node.js directory and all that good stuff here. And by the way, if you do Node.js, you actually can edit your code here and run it, which is very useful for debugging. That's kind of fun. And in this case, well, let's actually run it and see what happens. So if we go to test here, we can send this test event. And this actually did run, which means that we did run our code successfully. So that even though the code here doesn't have the node modules directory, the Lambda layer still provided that. So we can still edit and test our code base from here within the console here, which is kind of neat. Okay, but in this video, what I want to do is actually create a PHP function, right? So PHP is not an officially supported runtime, which means we need to create a PHP runtime somehow. Now, luckily, this is done for us. We go to ref.sh. This is a whole suite of tools for running PHP in Lambda. So if we go to runtimes, .ref.sh, it has a whole list of uh, runtimes as published and made public, right? So these are Lambda layers that are public. So our Lambda layer here could actually be made public if we wanted to. We can get, or in our case, we're not going to. These are public. So I am in US East 2. I want the latest of PHP 8.1. I don't need FPM, although you could put these layers together so that you get PHP CLI and PHP FPM together in your layers. Right? You can assign multiple layers. In my case, I'm just going to do PHP 8.1, this layer at version 17. I'm not going to do FPM because I'm not handling web requests in this video. So we're just running PHP um, on the command line, essentially. So this is the layer I want to use. Over here, I'm going to make a new directory. That directory is going to be foo func PHP. And we're going to CD into foo func PHP. There's nothing in there yet. I'm going to do composer in it. We're going to create a new project here. So composer in it. The project is fed helper foo func PHP. That sounds good. Description, author, stability, package type, license. Define dependencies. I want the bref bref package, latest version, no other packages, no dev dependencies, and I don't need auto loading there. And confirm generation, and I do want it to install the dependencies. So I am going to have a vendor directory here. I'm not going to bother um, adding an additional layer that includes the vendor directory here because we just don't need to for this video. What I want to show you instead is how we're going to create a function that has this layer that provides the custom PHP runtime and which just kind of works for us. We can just go ahead and use it. So in here, we actually need a code base. Let's go ahead and make index.php. That code base is going to be pretty simple. It's going to require our vendor autoload directory. It's going to use, so we're going to use the bref context object so that we have more functionality around the context given here. And it's just going to accept an event, right? So we're returning a function, a closure here. It's going to accept event as an argument and context as an argument, just like every other function we've made so far, the Golang one, the Node.js one, and here the PHP one. It's going to echo some data. So this echoes in PHP, echoes the standard out. So this will end up in CloudWatch, right? It's equivalent to doing console.log or um, logging in Golang as well. We're going to actually echo out a JSON string, which makes it easier for CloudWatch to parse out the results. So uh, info, this is going to CloudWatch. In other words, we're really just spitting out some dumb information to CloudWatch so we can see that it works. And then we're going to return a JSON string here. And that JSON string is going to have a message here. So we're going to pass a JSON object here within a name object. And if that's not here, if it's, if it's not found, we'll just say the name is unknown. But when we send a payload to this function, it's going to have a name parameter in that JSON. So not much going else here, right? It's just like our Node.js function and our Golang function. It's really simple. I can run php index.php. It's just returning a function that's not doing anything, so I don't get an error, but it's running. Um, we do php-l right to lint it, and it just says there's no syntax error, so that's good. Let's go ahead and create this function, and we'll see how it's a little different now. So we're going to create a new function. It's going to be called foo-func-php. We're going to reuse the same IAM role that we used before for our other functions. Its handler here is the file name, right? index.php for the handler. Now, we named the file index.php, and so the handler is named index.php as well. So if you have a different file name, then your handler should have that different file name as well. Our runtime here is provided.al2. This is an official runtime of AWS. It's basically an empty shell. There is a provided, and then there's provided.al2. The .al2 is a newer one. AL2 stands for Amazon Linux 2. It's essentially like a little CentOS environment, or Amazon Linux technically, but it's based on CentOS, or used to be. So memory size 512. The layer here is the interesting part, right? We added that layer from here. Um, our US East 2 layer from the AWS account that is hosting the layers. 
and the layer is PHP 8.1 and the version 17. So this layer is going to be included in that function automatically, and it's going to have the PHP custom runtime in there. And we're going to upload our index.zip file, which I forgot to create. Right? There's no index.zip file. Okay. So in our case, we're going to do zip-r9 index.zip and everything in this directory. So that includes the vendor directory. Oops, did this wrong. R9 and Q, because I don't want it to see literally every single file in here. And everything in this current directory. It's going to include composer JSON, composer lock, index.php, and the vendor directory recursively. Okay, so let's create that index.zip file. So we have created index.zip. It's kind of small, but that does actually create the vendor directory. I did confirm that it has everything in it. Okay, so we can go ahead and rerun that function, or actually run it this time, but that creates the new foofunk.php function. It's going to grab the index.zip file from the current directory and create it. So let's go ahead and refresh this. We'll see foofunk.php exists. Our versions, um, no versions, because we just uploaded it all at once. It's using a layer though, right? So if we go back to our dashboard, we'll see that it actually has a layer, the PHP 8.1 layer here. So hopefully this just works when we invoke it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll see we are invoking it, the foofunk PHP request response. So we're going to wait for a response. We are sending a payload. The name is Chris. Because we're sending a payload, we need this uh, CLI binary format flag and give us the results in an output.json file. And no errors there. Okay, so if we cat output.json, We'll see the result that we returned, right? Uh, the JSON string is a uh, message, hello, Chris Fidow. And actually, I think I made a small mistake here. This wants us to return an object that can be turned into JSON instead of the JSON string itself. Okay, so instead of a JSON string, we're just returning an object, a PHP array that can be turned into JSON itself. In other words, Lambda will take care of turning this into a um, JSON structure itself, an actual JSON object when we return it, where all we need to do is return an array, a thing that can be, that can be easily converted into a JSON string. So we'll zip that up again. I'm going to update a function, except this time the function is foo func php. Okay, let's invoke that again. And we don't have an error. If we cat output.json, this time we get an actual JSON string that doesn't have all that escaped stuff in it. Okay, so that's the more correct way to do this. Okay, so let's actually just confirm that we got what we expect also. We'll go to here, I'll refresh, we'll get a new log group, func PHP. We'll go to our latest log stream. We'll see uh, info, this is going to CloudWatch, right? We got an, a JSON object here, and because it's proper JSON that got outputted here, CloudWatch is actually able to parse it as a JSON object. The bigger point here is that this worked. PHP is not an official runtime of Lambda, but because the Bref project here has handily created a Lambda layer that has PHP in it that provides a PHP runtime, it does all the heavy lifting of doing that, we can pretty easily run PHP functions within Lambda. We're not just stuck with whatever runtimes they happen to give us out of the box. And of course, this is a very useful way that we can use layers, right? We just add a layer to our function here, to our Lambda function. We don't have to build that into our function ourselves. It's kind of pre-built functionality we can just append to our Lambda function. And all we have to do is provide some code that uses the stuff in that layer. 